hi, get a level here. Full-time content creator, and I make content for other content creators. Now, throughout my journey, of course, I tend to advise, I tend to suggest, I tend to recommend a lot of tools that are supposed to make your life easier as a content creator, to improve your workflow, if you will. Some of those tools I found myself while trying to improve my content, and some others came to me in the form of a sponsorship. Anyways, today I wanna to talk about five of those tools that I still use to this day, just to give you a little more insight into how I personally do things, but also to go a little bit more in depth when it comes to talking about those tools. Now, this next one is not on the list, but you can consider it a bonus tip. It is today's sponsor. Actually, it's sponsored by Own Pro. And if you don't know what Own Pro is, it's basically a service that gives you everything you need as a live streamer to begin your journey. Own is already known for having the biggest overlay library on the internet. So you get access to over 600 of those and they are available in multiple languages. You install full overlay packs in one click. You get your own chatbot that will not only help you moderate, but it will also tell you when you have new alerts. So with Own Pro, you get access to overlays, alerts, a chatbot, widgets, your own donation page, copyright free music, extensions, analytics, and own pro is free to use. But if you want to unlock more features, look at that. You can get 50% off the premium version with the code new year. So go check it out over at own.gg slash get level pro. That is O-W-N-3-D.gg slash get level pro. All right, let's get it going. This list is in no particular order, by the way. It's not, I'm not ranking them from best to worst or anything. And the first one I wanna talk about is Adam Vertical. You probably heard of Adam Vertical. I made a whole video about it, but it's basically this OBS plugin that you add to your OBS studio. And it creates basically this second OBS within OBS that allows you to create content vertically. And pretty much the three main things that you would do with OBS, which is record, live stream, and then use it as like some sort of clipping machine with what they call uh, playback, I believe, or backtrack, backtrack is what they call it. Can you tell I actually don't use this one? <laughs> but basically I've been using this a lot even though you haven't been seeing it. It's because I've been using it for some secret channels that I have. As soon as Adam Vertical was released, the first thing that caught my eye is the recording feature. I wondered, can I record in OBS Studio, which is what I'm doing right now, and also record with the Adam Vertical at the same time, meaning that I'm recording essentially pretty much the same footage, but one is gonna be normal, the other one's gonna be vertical. This may not mean much to you, but to me, it meant that I could record footage that I could edit in both landscape and portrait mode at the same time. And once I was done doing one editing, I had everything ready to go to YouTube, but also ready to go to Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts or TikTok. And then I could take that full length vertical video and basically chop it down into mini clips by just setting in and out points and then exporting. So that is something that I'm currently doing on some secret channels. I have a secret TikTok channel and a quote unquote secret YouTube channel. I haven't been using Adam Vertical for the other options really. I do plan on setting up the backtrack so that I can clip things that happen uh, mostly when I'm playing offline. I don't personally find the backtrack being that useful for me personally because I prefer my clips to be a certain way. I'm going to edit them no matter what. So it doesn't necessarily save me that much time to have the backtrack feature. Anyways, moving on to number two, and that's something that I'm trying to use more and more. And that's the app called InShot. Now you probably know about CapCut. CapCut is basically the industry standard right now to editing videos on your phone. It offers so, so much. And honestly, I have to admit as a devout user of InShot that CapCut is a better app. It just offers more. So if you had to choose between the two, go with CapCut. There's just a little thing that makes me prefer to use InShot. And that's just the manipulation of the little handles. When you have a clip selected and you have to drag things, InShot is just way smoother for me. All the drag and drops, the snapping, all of that is just so much smoother for me. But CapCut has a lot more options and assets and all of that for free. They also have a desktop app that is also free. So look into that if you're not necessarily new to video editing, but if you want to produce more content using your phone, it's probably an expensive phone, definitely look into CapCut. It is not complicated. I believe I made a video or a TikTok. I have a video on how to edit on your phone basically. Super easy stuff. So yeah, most of my B-roll footage is filmed on my phone anyway, so why not just record straight from my phone and edit then and then post from there? I plan on being more mobile. <laughs> I plan on traveling more. So incorporating phone content into my workflow is just ideal. Oh, and by the way, I have the paid version of InShot. It was like 12 bucks, I think, or nine. It was totally worth it. Moving on to number three, vidIQ. Do not sleep on vidIQ. First thing 
that you need to know about vidIQ is that they have a YouTube channel where all they do is give you tips on being a YouTube content creator, basically, and also TikTok, I believe, because vidIQ also gives you information on TikTok. So basically, it's a service that is supposed to help you in multiple ways. They have an extension that goes on your browser. And basically, while you're uploading your video, it's giving you tips. It's telling you, hey, the title is too long. The tags are too short and things like that. It's giving you suggestions for the keywords when it comes to the tags. And now it has AI integrated and it does things like generate titles for you, generate descriptions. I don't use the, the whole title and description generation thing, but I think it's cool. For some of my other channels, I actually use it because it's channels that I'm not putting as much effort into, but it's great. That being said, I do have a paid subscription. It is their mid tier. I think I'm paying like 12 bucks a month or something like that. And it gives me keywords. Right. So I can do research on keywords. If I want to make a video about Discord, for example, I'm going to just type in Discord. And it's going to give me the volume of searches. It's going to tell me how much competition there is on certain subjects. Finding your niche and things like that is great using vidIQ. There are some wild things like uh, idea suggestions every single day. They give you a list of videos that you could do that they think will do well. Honestly, it's kind of hit or miss, but mostly because my channel, like I've, I do DIYs, I do tech reviews I, and all that. So it doesn't really know what I do. And it also allows you to add competitors. So other YouTubers may be in similar niches and it will give you their stats. Basically, it will tell you, hey, this person grew like 20 percent more this month compared to you and things like that. So you can do competitive research, but like smarter. So even if you don't have the paid version, that's fine. You should still install it as a YouTuber. That is because it will also give you insight on other videos that you watch. It can show you the tags. It can show you the title. It can show you a score and all of that stuff. I used it for free for about two years, I think two or three years before I finally well, could afford it, first of all, but also felt the need to actually use it. I think when I hit 10K uh, subs, that's when I started paying for it. Also, one little thing is that sometimes it'll push certain keywords to you. It will show you everywhere. It will be like, hey, suggested keywords for your channel. And sometimes that actually reflects what the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm thinks of you, right? For example, for me, Weirdly enough, I've had a couple of Discord tutorial videos do very well. And for a while now, vidIQ has been like, hey, more, more Discord this and more Discord that. And I'm like, no one's going to click on them because I don't do really I don't really do Discord stuff. But um, no, I'm wrong. Once I started listening to it by making more Discord tutorials, uh, those videos get the most views on my channel. So, yeah, vidIQ is definitely onto something. Number four is Polypop. I haven't been talking about Polypop as much lately. That was a weird voice crack, but I still use it to this day. Every single stream, every single time I go live, I have Polypop open because I have a bunch of channel point redemptions. I have a lot of alerts that go with it. It just adds that extra touch. If you don't know what Polypop is, by the way, it's a software that is very much like OBS Studio. It's pretty much its own streaming software, except it runs on a game engine in 3D meaning that everything, interactions and all that, imagine OBS, but straight up in 3D with a list, a library of assets. There's some cool stuff. There's some filters. I believe I have my own filter on Polypop, thanks to the lovely people there. They have a whole library of assets that you can use and, and just make them bounce, use them as protocols and move them and, and do keyframes. There's so much that you can do. I am definitely not using it as much as I would like to, but I know it's in constant use in my stream because of certain channel point redemptions that I have. So if you're hearing about Polypop for the first time somehow, go watch my video, my videos on it because I made multiple I think I have four videos on Polypop now, if not five or six. It really adds that extra look to your stream that really makes it special. You know, that little 3D shine to it. And let's talk about number five, and that is Throne. Now, my first contact with Throne was through a sponsorship. Like I knew about it. Certain people were, were talking about it when Throne was launching for the first time. I believe there was some complicated stuff going on. There was like a whitelist or, or, or a, um, a wait list, actually, I should say, where not everyone had access to the website. But like that has been cleared up for a while now and everyone has access to it. If you don't know what Throne is, I beg you watch my videos. <laughs> I have a video on Throne. I have multiple videos on Throne and I even have more coming. It's basically a wish list system that doesn't dock you. <laughs> it's simple. You can set up a whole page where you're like, oh, I would love to get this and that and that. And your community can fund those things. And when I say fund, they can either pay for an item and then you just receive it at your place. They can also pay for an item and then you decide to receive the money directly and then you can purchase it if you want to. Or if it's from a weird store that Throne doesn't have association with. Or you can set it up so that 
people can fund certain products, right? So everyone can put a little bit into it until it's fully funded and then it is sent to your place. This really feels like a sponsored segment again. It's not. But what I really love about Throne is how content creator focused it is. It is made by content creators for content creators. That's the tagline. And you can see it because there are some Twitter notifications. So if someone pays for an item on your thing, you can set it up so that you tweet automatically. Hey, with a, with a thumbnail of it and thank you to the person, right? You can set it up so that your Twitch bot, for example, Nightbot, will tell you when someone actually purchased something from your wish list. Of course, you can set up multiple widgets that can be on screen while you're live streaming or just pop up as alerts when something is made <laughs> on your throne page. And if you're hearing about throne for the first time, I know you're thinking, who's gonna buy me stuff? No one's gonna ever buy me. That negative mentality is holding you back so much. To be fair, I also thought no one's gonna buy me anything. Or I thought, okay, maybe someone will buy me like the cheapest stuff from time to time. I don't know how many items I have been sent now, but a lot, a lot. And I've, I've only set it up like a couple weeks ago. So um, yeah, don't sleep on throne. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how small of a streamer you are. Get your throne page set up. You never know who wants to interact with your live stream and how they want to interact with the live stream. So put all the possibilities on the table, okay? Give them all the options. And if you already have a throne page, one extra tip, and this one is coming from my friend Viking Trashes, with the option to pay you directly for you to just receive the money, you can set up digital products. You can be like, hey, V-Bucks, <laughs> this pack of V-Bucks is this much. If you fund this product, which is V-Bucks, I will get to buy V-Bucks. And the cool thing is that digital products are often pretty cheap, meaning people are more likely to fund them. You see a cool skin in a video game, but it costs money boom put it on your throne that is like that's my tagline with all my friends by the way put it on your throne oh i wish i had put it on your throne <laughs> all right that that feels like a <laughs> That feels like an ad, but it's really not. Not this time. <laughs> but I do have a sponsored video with Throne coming up very, very soon. And it it's it's amazing news for you. If you're a content creator, <clears throat> my voice keep cracking. It's an it's amazing news for stay tuned. Stay tuned. I'm not gonna hype it up too much, but stay tuned. <laughs> and there you go. Those were five of the multiple tools that I use as a content creator, pretty much on the daily, and they have made my life easier. But of course, those are not the only five things that I use. So if you would like to see another video exactly like this one, that is five more tools that I use as a content creator, let me know in the comment section below. Show some interest and I will make it happen. Anyways, for those who didn't know, I think I briefly mentioned that I stream on Twitch, so you should definitely follow me there. I will put links to everything that I mentioned in this video. Some might be affiliate. I don't think I'm affiliate with most of those. But for full transparency, my relationship with those things is that for Throne and also Polypop, they have sponsored me. Um, I have an ongoing, I still have an ongoing relationship with them. That sounds like we're dating because I think they are great products and I actually use them on a day-to-day -day basis. So anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have some tools that you use and you feel like are lifesavers, let me know. Go out there, make me proud, get a level, out.